Hi guys, welcome back to part two of explaining R squared, the coefficient of determination. Okay, so what we did so far, just to catch you up, was we actually ran a multiple regression model just so that we could see what our goal is here to, to be able to get to this number, that's R squared. And then we kind of backtracked a lot. We actually got rid of our two predictors, our two independent variables, and imagine the scenario where we only had the variable we're trying to predict, and the best we could do, we determined, was use the mean of, that, of the observations that we collected in our sample to serve as a prediction. Okay? So, and then we also visualized that here, and we saw that the mean in red was can also be thought of as the center of gravity and then we took a step further and we said hey maybe as a measure of variability of how well this the mean predicts our variable y we sh we could measure the distance from the mean to each one of these points one by one Right? And I have to, it's going to get a little messy, but imagine I do this for each one of the points, and we actually did this here, and that was y minus y bar. So these were the numbers for that. Okay? Then we saw that summing that will always be zero, so we squared those differences. We have a name for these. These are squared deviations. These are deviations. These are squared deviations. And then finally, we ended off by summing the squared deviations from the mean. That was this number here. And we said that this serves as our baseline measurement for how well we can predict y. It also happens to be a measurement of the variability in y. Okay. So the idea now is, our next step in this video is, can we improve our predictions? In other words, can we reduce the variability? Notice that those two statements are equivalent. If I can reduce the variability of my predictions, then I am making better predictions. Right? So, uh, so let's go ahead here, and now we're going to bring in regression. Okay? And to do that, I have to unhide those two columns I had earlier, which I hid from analysis. Okay? So I'm also going to just, sh I guess, shift this over a bunch so that we have some room here to do our um, multiple regression analysis. Okay, now, all of a sudden, someone tells me, let's, let's do this again, let's make it a little dramatic. Someone tells me, hey, I know you're trying to predict why. And you did an okay job, and here's that here's kind of a measurement of how well it went, right? But what if I were to also give you some more information about these observations in the form of two more variables? So the y value here was 973, and x1 and x2 were 0 and 40. These two pieces of information should shed some more light on this value than if we didn't have them, like in this case that we were doing in the first part. Okay. It, once again, if these two variables are related to this guy, we should be able to learn something from them and how they relate to this guy and use that information to make better predictions than in the case where we didn't have these two, which is what we did in part, part one. This is important to understand, okay? Now once we un understand this, now we're back into, okay, let's use this information. Let's run a multiple regression model. In fact, I ran a simple, lowercase simple, first order multiple regression model. We did that in part one, and this was the output provided by um, the analysis tool pack in Excel. Okay? And really what we're focusing on is that R square. So now I want to say, see, what are the predictions I get here? So in, in, in regression, we call those predictions y hat. So using the coefficients here, I'm going to see what the predictions are for each of these observations. So here, 
the actual value, the observed value for y was 973. I want to see what the predicted value is using my multiple regression model that I learned. Okay, So to do that, just some basic calculations here. Let, let Excel do the, the calculations. Okay. So all I did, you can look at my formula. You could pause here and see what I've done here. I just plug these numbers in using these as my coefficients. These are my regression coefficients, right? Clearly titled here. Okay. And so if you needed to pause that, that's fine. I don't want to spend too much time on that. Now I can drag this down. Okay. These are the predicted values. These are the actual values. That's why we need this hat on top of our y. And when you write it down on a piece of paper, it's, you write it like this. But in Excel, it's too hard for me. It's too much time wasting to go, go and find that symbol. Okay. So now I can see, hey, how well, uh, how far were the predictions from the actuals? So that would mean that would amount to say y minus y hat, right? The, look how similar this looks to this. Here, our predictions were provided by y bar, which was a simple way to do things based on the fact that we had less information. Here, my predictions are based on y hat, which if, you've t if you know some basic multiple regression, you know y hat equals b0 plus b1 times x1 plus b2 times x2. In other words, we're saying that y is related to these two x's through this linear combination, Okay, which is much more sophisticated than just saying y hat, our predicted y is y bar. Okay, So with that said, look at see the connection between these two. Here, these were called deviations. Here, the technical term is residuals, the little e. You would even see the little e. In fact, I don't need these parentheses here. This is also equal to e. Let me get rid of these parentheses. Okay, So let's do this. Equals y minus y hat, simple enough. Drag this down. OK, by the way, let me also some of these numbers may be interesting so let me just pull them over you'll see that these also have the same issue that these guys had if you saw part one that they always sum to zero so it doesn't give us much to analyze so again we square the residuals so y minus y hat square quantity square equals okay these numbers will get big but we're not really focused on these uh, the actual values here, more of the more interested in the sum of them. Okay, so these are called the residuals squared or the squared residuals. Okay, so if I were to sum this column, this is another very important number. get rid of these decimal places that are starting to annoy me a lot. This is a sum of squares. This was a, also a sum of squares. This was sum of squares total. This is residual sum of squares, or sum of squared residuals, RSS. Oftentimes, you'll see this in caps in your textbooks. Okay, so these are the residual sum of squares. These are the total sum of squares. Okay, this is a measurement of the total variability in the variable we'll tr we're trying to predict. This is a measurement of the variability at, after we've used a multiple regression model to try to predict y. So this is how much, this guy is how much is left unexplained when you use y bar as your predictor, as your estimator. This is how much is left unexplained when you use y hat as your predictor, which is 
you basically using these coefficients here okay so rewind that and listen to that carefully okay these two that we're looking at are both measures of how much is unexplained clearly if you uh, look at these two numbers this has a lot le less unexplained than this okay how much less is a measurement of is what r square is so what r square is so r square that's this guy here it is how much is unexplained using multiple re linear regression divided by how much is unexplained using y bar if you look at this ratio this can be thought of as the proportion of total variability that is unexplained by the multiple linear regression model by this model that we generated okay if I do 1 minus what's unexplained I'll get the proportion that is explained and that's what r square is okay I'll go through this once again because there's really only one calculation for us to do okay left to get to this number hopefully okay RSS is this guy SST is this let's start with SST SST is a measurement of how much variability there is in our y variable in our dependent variable another way to see to hear that is that's how much is unexplained by using y bar as our estimator okay this is RSS this is a measurement of what's unexplained when we use a much more sophisticated estimator which is our multiple linear regression model here okay the proportion that's unexplained using multiple linear regression over the total variability will give us the proportion that's unexplained by the multiple linear regression and that's what this ratio here is okay if I do one minus that I'll get the proportion that is explained and that's precisely what r square is if you look up the definition of the coefficient of determination r square it is the proportion of total variability in the dependent variable the y variable that is explained by its regression on the x variables on the independent variables okay so to do this now one final or one or two final calculations we could do it in two steps if I do this guy divided by this guy and I express him as a proportion apparently that is a difficult thing to do here okay so let's just do yeah let's do four decimal so nine we can convert this to a to a percentage and say something like 19.13 percent of the total variability nineteen point thirteen percent of the to total variability in y is unexplained by its regression on x1 and x2 if I want to get the proportion that is explained I could do one minus this guy and that'll tell me the proportion of variability in y that is explained by its regression on x1 and x2 and if you look at this number carefully and I show you more decimal places you'll see that it is identical to the r square that was generated with the data analysis tool pack okay and that's what that means so typically when you just look at this number and you're asked to interpret it you would say something like 80.9 percent of the total variability in y is explained by its regression on x1 and x2
and that's why okay so between part one and part two hopefully you saw why that definition means what it means okay so I hope this was helpful obviously there's a lot more you can kind of focus on in uh, on the rest of this output but I feel R square is so often used and uh, sometimes misused and misunderstood that it's worth a mention okay it's a number it's a it's a ratio it takes into account um, the total variability that you're starting with so if you're starting with a, a very large amount of variability okay that matters okay because it's in the denominator of the calculation okay so I hope this was helpful be sure to share like subscribe comment and till next time have a great day